Episode of Dirt Grain and Steel. I'm going to show you how to splice a hay baler belt, which actually I'm using this belt as a conveyor belt to make this 12 foot long conveyor to get pea gravel out from underneath my um, trommel. So, what I've done is I've made this conveyor out of uh, C channel and I made all the rollers myself. I uh, used poly plastic cutting boards for the conveyor to slide on so I didn't have to make rollers for the belt to actually slide on. And this, this conveyor is not going to handle a lot of material all at once. So, I mean, it just basically dribbles on it. So this will be plenty to handle what comes out of the trouble. So what I'm going to do is, is the first belt I made I didn't get it right because I didn't have the uh, Flexco alligator rivet tool for their Flexco splices. So I went ahead and bought the tool because after screwing a splice up and making the belt too short, it, it just it made sense to buy the tool, which I thought I could do it without the tool. And after seeing how nice the tool works, there is no other way of doing it. So, what, I'm do what I've done is I made the belt extra long this time, instead of making it too short, stupid me. But I made it extra long. Um, I have plenty of adjustment to tighten it up. I've marked a straight line across here with the speed square. And the secret to these belts is getting them straight. They have got to be straight or they will not track right. The other one was... Uh, maybe an eighth of an inch off and it bowed the belt when it went down the conveyor and that wasn't good because it always ran it off the side no matter how I tracked it it ended up off the side so straightness is key to doing this properly so I got it marked I'm going to take my uh, grinder with a cutoff wheel and I'm going to cut this belt off now and then I will show you how you splice it Piece, which we'll keep this in case we ever have to make a repair if the belt gets ripped or whatever like that. I got plenty to repair since I screwed the first one. So anyways, I've already made this splice. I done this one a couple days ago. I done it when I was at the big shop because I couldn't wait no more. I wanted to try it out. So anyways, uh, Flexco sends with their alligator splices, they send this handy little, it's made out of cardboard, I got a better one here somewhere, isn't it? Uh, no. Left it in the house. Well anyways, they send this, this uh, max finished rivet height, max skived thickness and reach back and skived thickness to, thi to thin. So. When you go to do a belt splice, you want to have your belt that thickness. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the grinder and I'm going to let me get a let me get the other piece of belt here. I'm actually going to take the grinder and this tread that's on this belt. I'm going to skin that off so that it makes it smooth. So just take your grinder. They make a tool for this, but grinder works pretty good. Check 
take just a hair more off. thickness that we want. Let's just check it again. Yep, that'll work. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this belt out and I'm going to take it over onto my welding table onto a nice solid surface and that's where I'll do the riveting. So, <clears throat> we're over at the welding table now. I've got the belt laid out straight on the floor up over the welding table. We're going to take We're going to take our belt splicing tool. We're going to slide our belt into it. There are roll pins right here that the belt bumps up against, and there's a roll pin over here that it bumps up against. The belt splice sits down in here, and it can't move because it is locked in by these smaller roll pins. So we've got our splice in there. We've got our belt. And it needs to move over. It's a little tricky to get it lined up. I mean, it's not the easiest thing in the world to work with. But just make sure that belt splice stays locked in the roll pins so it can't move. There we go. Now, we're tight all the way across. Looks good. That looks real good. Now we're gonna, we're gonna tighten this up. I should tighten these up before I started. Not supposed to do that. Too tight. There we go. That's better. Okay. We're looking pretty good. It's one of them things that you should check more than twice just to make sure that it's perfect because these splices aren't cheap, belt's not cheap, so I like to make sure that it's perfect. Okay, so now we got it locked in there. We're going to take our one pound hammer. They say in the instructions use a one pound hammer. And then you're just gonna beat, you're just gonna bring the splice down on the belt without smashing your finger.
Make sure everything still looks good. Make sure your uh, roll pins are all touching the rubber. And then you can start putting your rivets in. These are your rivets. They, uh, they're like a nail on the bottom. You drive them through and when they hit the bottom of this belt splicer tool it actually opens up and drops the nail out. You start with your outside holes first. Don't set the rivet right away. You want to get them all in. Okay, we got our outsides. Alignment still looks good. Everything looks good. Now what I do is I start, you know, in the center. I put one. Then one couple from the end. But don't hammer them all the way until you've got them all in. I tried to do this the first time between two blocks of wood and it just didn't work because you gotta have a nice flat surface under it and <clears throat> you gotta have a nice square spot for these rivets to hit in order to activate them like I showed you to make them come apart and with a block of wood that, that just that doesn't work. It doesn't really say that you have to start have a pattern or anything when you're putting these in, but I just kind of work back and forth a little bit. It just seems like it might be the right thing to do. Um, the belt splicing tool, the Flexco uh, alligator rivet tool, is about $192 on Amazon. That's where I found it. And, <laughs> like I said, trying to do it between a blo two blocks of wood was not the way to do it. And I ruined, I basically ruined a belt and I ruined a set of splices. So, after that, I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to spend the money. I'm going to do it the right way. I should have done this from the start. And that probably wouldn't have happened. So now, we have all of our rivets in. Now we can start hammering our rivets. It, it takes approximately eight hits to, to actually rivet each rivet. Um, I don't count them. I just hammer along back and forth. And you do not want to set the rivets with one hit. You want to you want to do multiple hits per rivet. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hammer these in now. enough. Now I'm going to get a little pry bar. Here's one conveniently on the floor because I need to clean the shop. And now we're just going to pry this up 
and there we have it. We have a belt splice. Everything looks good. All the rivets are set. I'm happy with that. It's good and straight. And like I said, all these, these nails release. So when you're done, you turn it upside down. You take a hammer. And you just tap them out. And that's it. But see, this is how this works. The uh, belt bumps up against these uh, roll pins here. And then you drive the rivets through these holes. And when these rivets come to the bottom, they flare open. And then it drops that nail out. So, it's a handy tool to have. Real nice tool. I mean, doing it without it's not the answer. I know it's kind of expensive. And also what I do is I take the splicer pins and I take them over the grinder and I sharpen them like you would a tungsten in a uh, TIG welder. So that when that goes through the belt splice, that helps line this up and makes it a little easier to get it through. So you can actually drive it through like a nail. So anyways, I'm going to get this belt put back in this conveyor and see how it runs. So we've got our uh, conveyor belt threaded back in the conveyor and we're going to make the final splice here. So we bring this together. Just like that. There we have it. Our belt is put back together. Beautiful splice. Very nice splice. It's a little cup, but that's from hammering it to the rivets and stuff. That's not going to hurt anything. Um, in the instructions, it says to cut these at an angle right here. But I'm going to leave mine straight. Because I'm going to have skirt boards on this conveyor. And I'm afraid if I cut these... The pea gravel will fall through there and get out and get under the belt or what, whatever. So I'm going to leave them just like that for now and I'm going to call that good. So I'm going to get this conveyor tightened up and I'm going to take it for a test run with my uh, DeWalt joist drill down there. It, believe it or not, is enough to run this conveyor and it runs it really good. So when I size a hydraulic motor for this conveyor, I'm going to go off the specs on that drill if possible and see if. I'm going to start with something that's got as much torque as that drill, and that should be plenty to run this conveyor. So this conveyor also could be used for firewood. I, When I had the other belt in it, I stacked pieces of firewood on it, and it ran them off the end. So if you had a log splitter or something, this conveyor would stack your firewood for you. And you could run it right off the log splitter pump with some kind of, uh, of a diverter valve, and I think it would work pretty good. Or... We had plans maybe making one of these to handle uh, seed soybeans or something like that. So I'm on to something good here. I can't wait to get it done. I can't wait to get it out to the trommel and get some stone running on it, see how it's going to work. So I'm going to get this tightened up and then I'm going to do a video of it running. And I'll send you on your way. Spliced on, got the conveyor, the belt put on, got it tightened up. I'm going to do a small demonstration right here with some kitty litter. Works pretty good. It's got some tracking issues still. It wants to hug one side or the other, and I gotta figure that out. I might make some guides to guide the belt back and forth a little bit. But I'm happy with it. Runs nice and smooth. So 
Yeah. Well, if you liked uh, this video, uh, give me a like and a subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. And uh, thanks for the support so far. I'm uh, growing in subscribers every day and enjoying making these videos. So, like and subscribe. It influences me to make more videos. Thanks for watching.